Welcome into a brand new edition of War Up on the WPIAL. Greg Warnock alongside Jeff Upson looking at the team state championships. Hard to believe we're talking about it this late in the year, but uh, the, the year we've had, it's good to still be talking wrestling, I guess, at this point in the year. And uh, got a different background. Uh, if anybody heard the uh, you know, PA podcast, the podcast that Jeff and Eric did, you know, had to switch it up a little bit since they want to call me out. So and then don't worry, I, I got the, the blue on. Thanks to the Burrow folks for uh, you know hooking us up. We really appreciate that. We love uh, we love you guys. But uh, you know, I wanted to just point out this blue shirt to Eric, who may or may not be listening here. This is '95, Eric. And this is Toy Story. I don't know if you ever heard of it or not. It's a pretty popular movie from Disney. Has a, a couple characters. They're called Woody and Buzz. They made four total movies of Toy Story, by the way, Eric. I, I didn't realize you were so old that you didn't understand wow. that. But you, I, you, I just you are going hard. You're going hard at my man Eric Knopfsteiner because of the comments <laughs> he made. My gosh, like you are. You, you don't want to. You don't want to tick off Greg Warnock because. He, he may come at you like a savage. You know, I th I thought I thought Jeff that you know he and I were boys after the War Op episode we had, but apparently not. Man, he he came at me like a like a crazy man last, yeah, a couple he, days ago. He, so he I did, had to man. I had to get that shirt back out and just represent. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't have your back. I kind of threw you under a bus too with the uh, well you with did the, yeah with the I alcohol mean, alcohol in the back. You know, like I kind of said you know we're. We're kind of a, a podcast based around high school wrestlers, and you're going to be, you know, broadcasting your your alcohol in the back. Probably not the best best look. Although you, although you told me to put it, there, I did so. tell you to put it like that. I, it's a good backdrop. You have a, a heck of a bar, man. It's a nice bar. I like it. I like hanging out in your basement. But I, I guess in, in retrospect, it may not have been appropriate. So it is yeah, what right. it is. Great. I'm, I'm glad you aired out your grievances. Now you're you're okay. I got the whole rest of the basement here, so you know we got uh, we still got sports themed, so it's all good. I don't get that fancy PA power drop like you got. That's that's some fancy stuff right there. Mm -hmm. On to the the recapping uh, from AAA this past week. Uh, you look at the brackets, every district with a champion in this thing. Delaware Valley had an opening win over LaSalle, 52 to 18. Cathedral Prep over Carrick, 66 to nothing, setting up the uh, quarterfinal action. And we'll just kind of uh, say all four results, and then let's talk a little bit about them, Jeff. Spring Ford de defeats de Delaware Valley, 37-17. Central Dauphin with the upset over Bethlehem Catholic, 29-26. Waynesburg over Cathedral Prep, 54-12. Williamsport over Belafonte, 33-32. Let's start with uh, obviously with WPIO and Waynesburg, 54 to 12. I don't think too surprising that uh, Waynesburg gets the win here, but dominating fashion. Uh, Cathedral Prep without Jacob Van D, Panera Johnson all the way up to 172, but Waynesburg didn't wrestle Rocco Welsh and still wins big. Yeah, I mean, you, you had said you're kind of surprised maybe it was a little bit lopsided. I'm, I'm not at all, really. I mean, w even without Jacob Van D, who who I'm told is, is like upward of like 125 ish range. So uh, probably the reason why he didn't go, but you know, Waynesburg's just so solid, even without um, having Rocco Welsh in, they were just completely dominant, you know, all the way through um, Noah Tustin's the, the one that got pinned at 215 by John Campbell, who is a, a super regional qualifier. He, he's a very tough wrestler. Um, it's, yeah, lopsided, but Waynesburg's just that good. Um, and I said this on the Power Hour with Eric is you can might as well just send the the trophy to Waynesburg because they are just that they're that darn good, right? Um, and you look at all the way through the the line up here, only a few changes. Mac Church up to one twenty six, um, for tourists down at one twenty. So I'm sure Church having to make weight every single week, going all the way through to the state title, probably you know had hard time holding the weight potentially um you know Rocco maybe you know we, we see him not go at 152 get him healthy ready to go for for the you know the semifinals and the finals the biggest match of the the day was Luke Augustine state champ versus Panero Johnson from Cathedral Prep who's going to Iowa State so Iowa State versus Pitt um and, and obviously Panero is up two weight classes however that's still a pretty good matchup Luke Augustine was able, able to beat him 3-1 but you know, not surprising, really. Um, and I think we're going to see a lot of, you know, this throughout the rest of the way through. And remember, this is the quarterfinals. So the semifinals and the finals, when they come up, 
I can see Waynesburg putting up 50 on on most of these rest or most of these teams coming up honestly yeah I mean I think we talked about the the gap between the two is probably at least 20 at least 20 points right from Waynesburg and the next team down in the state throughout the entire world there's Bethlehem Catholic Nazareth uh, Central Dolphin Cathedral prep any of them uh, so yeah, I guess the big question, I guess if you would have told me Rocco Welsh is out of the lineup, I would have thought, you know, Cathedral Prep had more of a chance. But, hey, they got the pin at uh, 52, did Cathedral Prep, and it still didn't make a, uh, much of a difference. Um, Rocco Welsh, I'm a, it might just be, is, do you think it might be just a weight thing, too, for him, or do you think it's uh, more injury? No, I think it's probably more weight and just resting, to be, to be honest with you. Um, after that state tournament, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure some of them may have had bugs of some sort. I, I would assume, because they didn't, I thought, you know, like you saw Henson didn't look great. Um, you know, maybe there's something going around, but I, I honestly think that with with Rocco is probably preemptive. Like, hey, let's let's give him some rest. You know, a, a lot of these guys. I mean, and that's what we talked about before the individual state tournament was how many of these guys are going to be banged up after a, a five week stretch of just brutal matches, one after the other after the other. You know, Rocco banging heads with uh, AHR over and over and over again. Um, those are that's going to take a toll on you. So, you know, they had some time to rest up. Maybe now it's the weight thing. But I honestly think you're going to get a full Waynesburg lineup come, you know, Saturday at Cumber Valley. I don't think it's going to be any issue. And, and to be honest with you, Greg, even if Rocco Welsh doesn't even travel to Cumber Valley, they're still going to win. Uh, they're still they're still going to win regardless because they're just that they're that solid. They're that tough. Yeah. Definitely. The team they'll face, Williamsport, they had a tight one, 33-32 over Belafont. A uh, couple guys up in weight classes, like Jude Swisher up to 138 for uh, Belafont. But tight one, but uh, Williamsport gets the win. Yeah, and that was, a, that was a great match. There was a lot of really good – so last night was a night full of fun quarterfinal action in both double A and triple A, I thought. Um, there was a lot of good action going both ways. Williamsport beating Belafont. 33 to 32 was was a, a really good one. Um, th- there was a couple matches that I thought could have went either way. Rossman from Belfont bumps all the way up to 285, beat Charlie Crew. Uh, Crew's two nothing, which was I, I thought you know Rossman's a guy who's up from 89, so that's you know he's given up some weight. Um, but the biggest match was Sebastian Robinson from Williamsport got a major decision at 172 pounds right out of the gate. That would have that ended up being the difference there for uh, for Williamsport. So. Yes, we're going to, you know, we, we see Waynesburg and Williamsport. And, um, you know, there's a couple good matches, right? We have state runner-up Cal Nazio from Williamsport, um, who lost to Caden Williams in the, the state finals in Triple A. Him and, and Kai Sheptik, I think, is going to be a great match at 106 pounds. You got the Bauer brothers, Braden and um, Riley Bauer, at 32, 38-45-ish. You know, they can kind of move around there. So you could potentially see a, a Stone King-Bauer rematch or maybe even – uh, a Riley Bauer and Wyatt Henson match. So outside of that though, you know, Williamsport's going to be struggling, right? They're going to, they're going to have some, uh, a tough, tough road ahead of them um, to, to, to get past Waynesburg, which obviously I don't think they are, but I think there's going to be some fun individual battles within that overall match. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what they do with Riley Bauer. If he end up facing Henson, if, if Rocco Welsh is out of the lineup, bumping him up, bumping him into Welsh. It'll be interesting to see what uh, Riley Bauer ends up doing. But, yeah, I agree with you. A couple really good individual matchups should take place. The uh, one, uh, some would may call it a surprise, uh, Central Dolphin over Bethlehem Catholic, 29-26. Uh, your alma mater, Jeff, getting it done. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I, it, it's hard to not, not get excited about that because, you know, Central Dolphin – you know, it's a place I, I I grew up. I wrestled through through the program, and um, I they're they're you know the head coach Jeff Swigard still the head coach there. He was he was my head coach, and um, you know uh, I'm just really happy for him. I'm, and that's nothing to say against Jeff Karam and, and Becca because uh, you know Jeff Karam's a great coach. I, I love him, talking to him. You know, he was on the show I think like four times one year in a row, and and uh, you know he he's a great guy and he gets his guys ready. Central Dolphin just was able to pull out some hats you know some some rabbits out of the hat like crazy and and really started at 138 pounds where josh miller pinned matt mayer um now matt mayer it was at 32 majority of the season bumps up to 38 miller didn't even make it to the state medal round he was a state medalist last year if you remember he lost to curse phipps in the semifinals um and there's that famous picture of him sitting on top of phipps like phipps isn't doing anything he's on bottom it's it's kind of a funny picture 
Miller pins Mayer, which no doubt is is the the match of the night. That's the one that that swings it. Um, Evan Gleason beats Buckman five nothing, which was a, a tight one. The other one was Ethan Pay at one seventy two beating Justice Bozzi four three. Pay is a guy who has a losing record over four or three years in Central Dolphin, um, and and he is our three time regional qualifier. But you know the the schedule of of Central Dolphin. Ethan Pay beats Justice Bozzi four three, which was probably the biggest, you know, not the the biggest surprise, but the the one that I thought, man, that's these guys are ready. Um, you know, they just looked like just watching that match, man. Central Dolphin was ready to go, and then of course Stewie um, gets a fall at heavyweight to to lock it up uh, over uh, over Spezza to put to put them ahead. Yeah, I mean Central Dolphin. I mean it's a surprise in the sense that. You know, CD is undefeated. They came in number five in the state to Becca's three. So, I mean, it's it's not a huge upset, but on, on paper, you know, I thought it was a pretty big result for the Rams, um, you know, and, and now they have a chance to potentially be in the, the state finals. When, and I said this on the uh, the PA Power Hour was, you know, the winner of the Becca CD match, I expect to uh, to win over the Delaware Valley Springford match. Now Springford, I, I, they're very tough, right? So I think that match is, is going to be tight, but, um, CD, if they wrestled like they did against Becca, they're going to the finals. Becca without uh, Dante frenzy in the lineup yep. for uh, their team. Also Tyler Kasak up a weight to 132, Matt Mayer up a weight to 138. Do you think if with frenzy in the lineup and coupled with Kasak down Mayer down that Bethlehem Catholic wins that match? they're in a much better position to win that match. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and I'll say this for, for Central Dolphin, Matt Repost, who did not have a great state individual tournament, um, majors Ashton Campbell at 126, eight, nothing. That was huge for, for me personally to see Repost who, you know, again, I don't think he looked great at individuals. He got a major over Ashton Campbell, who is very, very solid. Um, you know, I'm not saying Frenzy and Campbell are a wash and they're the same. You know, Frenzy beat him in a wrestle off, but it was close. Um, I, you know, if I was Becca and then maybe I, I want, you know, that repost and, and Kasak match, what they thought was, okay, Campbell's going to either get three or give up three, and Kasak's going to get a six if he goes up to 32, right? Um, with him and, and repost, it was a 3 1, 3 2 match at state. So you know that that's, you know, that's a three point. Uh, match what they weren't expecting was my, you know Josh Miller to get a fall um, and the one match that I thought could have went either way in which it did go back and forth was 145 Andrew Harmon and Ryan Garvick Garvick's a, a freshman who was high up on our top incoming freshman report uh, I really like him a lot I thought he was actually going to beat Harmon he ends up losing 11-9 so yeah you throw in frenzy and you you change around some weights and, and things are going to get different but you know, I think you wrestle that 145 match a couple more times. It, it's going to go Garvick's way. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you can say what ifs all night, but I, <laughs> at the end of the day, CD won, right? Yep, absolutely. So now we go into the semifinals here. So you talked about Springford and Central Dolphin being tight. You mentioned you, you have the edge of Central Dolphin. Do you think it's going to be, you know, with like how many points do you think it's going to be within here between this, this matchup? Oh my gosh! I think this will be a, a you know five to seven match. You know I think there's not going to be, I don't think there's going to be much wiggle room for either side. Now of course, each has their big guns, right? And we know Spring Ford, we know what they bring to the table. Jack McGill, state runner-up, nearly beat Jagger Condomitti. Um, You know Joey Milano at 189. He can go either way. He can go 89. He can go 215. Um, you know those are the big guys, but then you have Zach Needles, who I think is a very, very solid uh, senior for them, and of course Cole Smith down at 106. I think him and Liam uh, Flanagan is going to be a really good match. Um, you know, Springford's got some guys that don't give; they're very similar to Central Dolphin, and they don't they have a lot of like regional qualifier level guys. They don't have guys that are necessarily going to come out and blow you away, but you have guys that are going to keep it close. Um, you know, I think CD's got to get bonus at 38. Um, I think they got to get a win at 45. I think repost against Quinn Smith. has got to potentially get another major. Um, and, you know, they're going to have to win some close battles. It's going to come down to, you know, bonus points like it always does, right? Who gets them and who doesn't. Um, but I think this is going to be tight. I could see it being a, a four-point, you know, five-point match between these two. 
If you're looking at Waynesburg on the other side, uh, looking like they're going to be big winners in the semifinals, potentially. Waynesburg in the final against Central Dolphin Springford. Is there one team, you're, if you're Waynesburg, you're like, I'm hoping and I'm rooting for this team, or does it not even matter? No, it absolutely does not matter for them. And I hate to say that because that takes all the fun away from it. But, um, you know, for me, so like I'm looking at it from a position of a fan standpoint. I, there's certain matches that I want to see, uh, individual matches. Of course, with Springford, you, you have some of those big names like Jack McGill and Joey Milano. Um, I'd like to see some of those matches. With CD, I, I'd like to see some of those matches go down, um, especially between some of those those guys like Josh Miller and Cole Hammett. You know, I'd, I'd love to see that matchup. Um, you know, guys like Ryan Garvick, depending on where he goes, he could see Cole Hammett. Um, you, you have, you know, down beneath Liam Flanagan and, and Kai Sheftik, two guys that were very um, highly rated on our top incoming freshman report. So individually, I like that matchup better. I think that one would be a little bit closer on paper, but I, Waynesburg still – they're light years ahead, Greg. I mean, there's just there's just no there's no other way to put it. And um, you know, having some of the the top guys not only in the the state but in the nation, it, it's hard for any team, regardless of who you are, to to stand toe to toe with them and make it a good match, right? So, I, I like the the matches with CD, but I also think that Spring Forward is, is going to come to battle as well. So, you know, and they're all going to be at Cumber Valley, so. Might as well just let them all wrestle each other, right? Well, let's just <laughs> let's just put them all in and, and have them wrestle each other, um, you know, and f- figure out some of these these matches that didn't necessarily get to happen because we saw a watered down or you know a very skewed look at the state tournament because we had the super regions, right? So um, it's nice to see some of these guys match up head to head. When you look at obviously this year being different, right, with um, only one team going from each district, but. Obviously, the WPL has been very successful in getting two to the top four or even sometimes three to the top four. Uh, You look at the other teams, Seneca Valley, Hempfield. Do you looking at how the teams are kind of wrestling right now? Do you feel like they would be potential finalists on the other side if this was a normal year? Um, You know, Seneca Valley would for sure. Um, You you look at Seneca Valley and, and, you know, they were probably. You know, they, they have uh, an argument that could be made that they are the second best team in the state. Um, and they just so happen to be in the same, you know, district as, as Waynesburg. Um, yeah. I think Seneca Valley centered often would be a, a heck of a match. I, I, you know, and I'm not just saying centered often is going to make it to the finals. I, you know, spring forward and Seneca Valley would be a good match. Um, you know, Seneca Valley still doesn't have enough for Waynesburg, but they certainly could be top two in the state, but so could Nazareth. Uh, in my opinion, Nazareth is a team that I, I think is, is right up there with the, the best of them. Hemfield, you know, another team, maybe, you know, depending on, here's the thing with Hemfield, they have some really, really good guys, but they have some guys that aren't, aren't that great. They don't, you know, with a team like Central Dolphin, all their guys are pretty pretty good, pretty decent, right? Uh, they don't give up a lot of bonus points. And then you have some hammers that are, are always going to win. Um, so I would say Seneca Valley definitely would be in the top two, top three in the state had they been in, you know, in the, the state tournament for sure. You look at, uh, speaking of Waynesburg, one thing we haven't really talked too much about, we did talk about how they have a lot of good individuals nationwide. How would you, I mean, I, I'm not sure what you know nationwide as far as high schools, but where does Waynesburg's team rank nationally? You know, in terms of, you know, and it's, this is gets into the, the public school and private school thing, because, you know, if you look at Blair and Sam, you know, that that's, you know, that's not really comparable. Um, and you also have to but look at the weights. they could compete against them. <laughs> no, they, they absolutely, yeah, no, they, they 100% could compete against them. Um, I would say... They're, they're definitely top 10. Waynesburg's a top 10 team, potentially a top five team um, in, in the nation right now, currently. Um, and here's the thing. The the one issue is other teams are wrestling with 14 weight classes. Pennsylvania is wrestling with 13. Waynesburg really benefits from that, having the 13 as opposed to the 14. Not saying that they couldn't fill it, which they could, but their 13 are very, very tough 13s. You're, you know, when Eli Mackle and, and Noah Tustin are your weak link, so to say, or Joe Simone, like that that's saying something because those guys are, are studs in, in their own right. So when you look at the national level, I mean, Blair, Malvern Prep, Wyoming Seminary, you know, yeah, those are teams that are, are 100% going to bring it, you know, 14 weight classes all the way through. Um, but Waynesburg would hang. Um, and, and you look at the other 
non, you know, private schools, if you will, or, you know, I, I think Waynesburg's absolutely neck and neck with any of the best quote public schools in the nation for sure. Um, you don't have the amount of talent that Waynesburg has and not automatically become in that conversation. And then you throw in these other guys that they have, you know, these, these journeymen like, like Colton Stone King, right? Cole Homet. These are guys that, you know, kind of floated around the national rankings in and out of them. They're, they're the guys that are going to make the difference. Um, and even uh, like Ryan Howard at heavyweight. I mean, that's, that's a guy who's, you know, been a four year starter for them. He, he's going to make a huge difference against a team that, you know, has just a mediocre heavyweight. So I, I really do think Waynesburg in the nation, you know, you can make the argument that they're top five. Um, and I would love to see them. When I mean, we tried multiple times to get it set up with a Wyman Seminary Waynesburg match, it just could never come to fruition because of multiple things with COVID. Um, but we did get to see Malvern Prep and Waynesburg at the uh, Powerade tournament. Of course, Waynesburg was out Luke, without Luca Augustine. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's comparable. There's comparables in there, but uh, Waynesburg could definitely hang with, with all those schools. Is Wyoming Summary starting their season now, or is it completely washed? No, so it's not it's not completely washed. Uh, National Preps is going to have a tournament. It's just not going to be like we I – mean, just like everything in, in the current state of things. It's not going to be um, how it was normally, so um, it's, it's going to be a little bit different. So – Wyman Seminary is not going to be wrestling like dual meets, um, that's for sure. But they, they should everything go as planned, they'll be wrestling the, the quote, national prep tournament. I was going to ask, maybe there's still some hope for the uh, for the potential matchup. I'm sure Waynesburg would love to have that opportunity. You look at, uh, you mentioned the 14 down to 13, they definitely benefited. Darnell Johnson would have been that, that sure. guy filling in the spot. And he's, you know, obviously a, a very solid contributor, a guy who would, uh, you know, fill out the lineup uh, – you know, so it wouldn't be a bad wrestler by any means in that spot. But yeah, I definitely agree. You know, to lose uh, someone in the upper weights is definitely the best for for Waynesburg, considering how strong they are underneath. You look at Double A on the other side. Uh, the results: Lackawanna Trail beats Archbishop Bryan 39-30, Chestnut Ridge over Brookville 41-21 to give us our quarterfinals. Quarterfinal results: Boiling Springs over Lackawanna Trail 28-24, Southern Columbia over Notre Dame GP, who was one of the favorites 56-14, Reynolds over Forest Hills 50-21, and Sport in the shirt Jeff Burrell 32-31 over Chestnut Ridge. And let's start there. What a win for Burrell to get in the top four. Yeah, I mean that was just an incredible match, and uh, I'm going to put up on the screen the uh, the comparisons between. The, um, the the match that happened two months ago and the match that happened before. So if you look at the, the screen here, on the left you have, um, that's from January uh, of, of 2021. On the right you have it from March. So this is almost exactly um, two months later. Chestnut Ridge beat Burrell 33-30 to at the Al Brookville Ultimate Duels. Yesterday Burrell was able to win 32-31. It was a 31-31 tie on criteria. And you look at some of the differences in these box scores. Daniel Moore won by Tech Fall over Colby Christie last time. Um, this time around, Colby Christie gets pinned by Trevor Wyant at, at um, 160. Now, this match started out, the, the Burrow Chestnut Ridge match started out much in favor of Chestnut Ridge. When this started to get it going, I was thinking, man, Burrow's going to have a hard way back. So, Riggleman from Chestnut Ridge gets a, a forfeit at 113 pounds. Callan Bowman, who is a former state runner-up for Chestnut Ridge, didn't make it to the medal round this year. He majors um, Farah, which I thought was a, a huge uh, turn of events for him personally because you, you look at what happened last time, Bowman got a 5 nothing decision. So that that was huge, you know, adding that, that extra point on the board for, for Chestnut Ridge. But then... Salerno only gets a uh, a decision over Kobe Burkett um, at 132 pounds, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, 132. Last time Salerno beat Ross Dahl 6-4. Um, Ross Dahl is able to get a win in sudden victory over uh, Sean Szymanski, which I thought was was that after that match, I'm thinking, okay, it, it it may be it may be out of the the question for Burrow to come back from this because, you know, that was such a, a toss up match for them. Um, and you know, Ross Dahl lost last time to Salerno this time it beats, uh, Szymanski. Aaron Edwards had a big win over Bowman at uh, 138 pounds, eight, four Ian Oswald only gets a major over Jack Moore at 145. Um, 
last time around, Jack Moyer was the savior at 145 pounds. He beat Edwards 3-1. So that was a huge – now all of a sudden you started seeing the, the, you know, the wheels and the momentum changing direction. Again, didn't we talk about this before? Damian Barr wasn't he the wasn't he the hero in the Burgettstown match? He um, sure was. Yeah, <laughs> Damian Barr comes back again, uh, beats Luke Moore five four. Last time, Luke Moore beat him twenty to nine. I just want to put that in perspective. Two months ago, you know, I'm going in as a wrestler. I'm thinking, man, last time I wrestled this dude, I got beat up twenty points scored on me. I lost twenty nine. I don't know what he did in those last two months because he wasn't at the state tournament, I, you know, I mentally, I don't know how you, you get in the mindset that I'm going to, I'm in this match. I think that's a credit to the Burl coaching staff. Daniel or uh, um, Damian Barr comes out and gets a five, four win over Luke Moore to completely wipe the slate here. And now all of a sudden you go from, um, you know, getting a, a major decision and now giving up a decision that that's huge, right? That's, that's a, a seven point swing for them. Um, AJ Corrado gets a, a fall at 72. Uh, Cole Clark gets a, a fall at 215, which was which was big. He uh, he got a fall last time over um, Bullman as well, and then they forfeit to Hornack, who uh, last time he got a fall in, in 58 seconds over Holderbaum, Brock Holderbaum. So, you know, it didn't start out good for Burrow. Um, you know, those first four weight classes, because you think, all right, they give up a forfeit. Bullman gets a a, a major. Dahl wins a tight one over Savansky. Salerno only gets a decision, and now all of a sudden you're thinking we're we're kind of in a hole. But Burl just kept on battling back, man. They, I, I love I love it. You know these two, I could watch these two wrestle ten times. And I think what's nice about this one, there's so much mutual respect between these two programs. You know, um, and I heard Chris Smith and and uh, uh, George talk about it last night on the the call. Uh, about the mutual respect after you know the tragedy that happened with Kai Burkett, who who was tragically killed in an auto accident, you know Burl sent a contingency of folks out there um, to pay respects to him. You know that's that's huge. Um, there's a lot of mutual respect and and a lot of admiration between you know Coach Josh Deputy of of Chestnut Ridge and and Coach Josh Shields of Burl. I mean these these guys both just keep on setting that bar higher for each other. So um, you know it's kind of one of those. There's special stories, right, that you have between these two because they seem to always be wrestling each other. Um, but, I mean, talk about such a turn of events. I mean, Burl had to to win some matches that they didn't last time, and, man, Damian Barr was that guy. He was he was huge in that match. Um, uh, you know, and Cole Clark obviously was huge as well. But uh, I look at that, and he pinned him last time, so he should have pinned him this time. But it's still it's still pretty big. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to me, I, I didn't get the opportunity to watch the match uh, last night, but when I looked at the box score, immediately my eyes went to that match at 152 for Damian Barr. Uh, Luke Moore is finished seventh in the state of Pennsylvania. I mean, he had, yeah. he was a solid wrestler throughout the entire postseason. Finished his seventh in the state. Damian Barr didn't even get out of the WPIL. He finished fourth in the WPIL losing to Slovic, who he had uh, pinned previously. So Barr was the hero in the uh, WPIL championships, and now he's the hero here because absolutely, I think everybody going into it would have thought, even not giving up a major, at least giving up a decision right there, and, and to win that match, ultimately won the match. And yeah, I agree with you though. These two always within five points of one another. It seems like I mean, it's always like one match swings it either way, and this time it was Damian Barr. He got, he got it done for his team, and you know after getting that win, it just uh, you know went really, you know they knew they had to get uh, you know three wins, you know, three win, three six-point wins in order to win the match, did Burrow. Then you have them with A.J. Corrado, Cole Clark, Cooper Hornack, and Hornack, Clark, Corrado. They've all gotten falls already against their opponents in Chestnut Ridge. So you had to feel confident going into those last set of matches. Yeah, I mean, really going forward, I mean, it was it was such a – you know, and and again, it's it's not how you start, it's how you finish, right? And and these guys, it's easy to to start getting that that momentum where Chestnut Ridge is is winning some matches, and you know, and when I say winning, you know, they're they're not giving up bonus points, right? Because and and Smitty said this on the call multiple times last night. They're like, it's a win for you know Chestnut Ridge on the the scoreboard, but it's really you know in the the chess match here, it's a win for, for Burrow because they didn't give up bonus points or they got bonus points here. So, um, you know, and that's the, the cool thing about dual meets is it's, it's, you know, every person counts, every wrestler counts. It's not just your big guns. It's, it's everybody. It's, it's all, it's all, you know, 
all the wrestlers that are out there put in their foot on the line, they're all important, right? Whether you give up six, whether you get six, whether you give up three or four, it's all about how you, you, you know, persevere through that. And Burl just showed it, man. They, they wrestled really tough. Um, you know, it's exciting for them because, you know, they're, they're top four in the state now, right? They're, they're top four in the state. There's no if, ends or buts about it. They beat a, a very tough Chestnut Ridge team that had beat them earlier. So, yeah, I mean, they've got to be pumped up for this. And, and you know, I'm really excited to see them in the, in the state semifinals because that match is going to be a good one, Greg. Yeah, let's talk about that. First off, uh, Reynolds getting the win over Forest Hills, 50-21. Uh, to 21. Forest Hills, obviously, their lineup's adjusted a bit. Jackson Arrington wrestling all the way up at 152 pounds, as an example, after winning a state title at 132. So Reynolds gets the job done. Uh, how do these two teams match up, Burrow and Reynolds? Yeah, I mean, you look at the uh... – on paper, right, and, and the amount of state-ranked guys are, are high and they're they're good. Um, you know, they wrestled last year. It was, uh, I believe, the Ultimate Duels. Yeah, it was the Ultimate Duels last year. Reynolds won 43 to, to 21. Um, and look, you know, Burl is is Burl. Burl, the the Bucks find a way to to make every match close, right? They they don't get blown out, right? They they really don't. They, even when they're giving up forfeits, they don't get blown out. They always come to to wrestle tough. I think Reynolds is, is, you know, the better team when you look at the depth, right? When you have guys, you know, and, and Eric asked me this on the power hour. He's like, were you surprised that only two um, Reynolds wrestlers made it to the state medal round only two placed? And I wasn't because, you know, they have Caden Berger, they have Gary Steen who are their stars, but they don't have, you know, they don't have the other quote stars here, but they just have really, really good wrestlers that have, you know, good records. Um, they're just, you know, they just came out of the West and, and, you know, they didn't make it into that top eight. Cole Toy uh, is a senior who I thought probably would have been in the top eight, but he, he did not. Um, you know, I look at Jordan DeCarmen, uh, J- Jalen Wagner, uh, Guy Rocco, um, Danello from Reynolds at heavyweight. He has a win over Jalen Stevens this year. Kane Kettering, Liam Four, and of course you have Gary Steen. Um, Logan Hammerschmidt down at, at 106. And, you know, I got to see Reynolds and, and Seneca Valley wrestle up at, at Reynolds this year. And I was very impressed with Seneca Valley. But I was also impressed with a few guys from Reynolds that really um, battled hard. Jalen Wagner at 160 was one of them. So, you know, they have some flexibility with where they can move guys around at. Um, you know, I, I just think they match up well here with Burrow. You know, I think they're probably the the favorites, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that it's 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 you know locked and loaded. You know, Burrow's gonna give up a forfeit, so that's that's six off off the board right now. They they forfeit one thirteen, right? So you you have to figure, all right, well, we're we're already down six. Where are we gonna make up for these points? And um, you know, I I think they have a, a chance, but I I think Reynolds is is gonna find a way to win. They're a four time state champions. They're they're going for their fifth which would be a record um, no one ever, no one's ever won five in a row. Reynolds is going for their fifth. Um, so that's saying something. You know, that that's 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 pretty impressive. You know, saying you mentioned about saying something and you talked about that forfeit. I I that's where I thought Burrow may not be able to get into that top four because they are giving up six. It's mm-hmm. very tough to give up six, especially when there's only thirteen weight classes as opposed to fourteen. To give six and then still be able to get into the top four in the state tells you how good Burrell's team really is. So I think it's going to be a great matchup. I'm super excited to see it. You mentioned, uh, you know, Reynolds probably coming in as a potential favorite. One team that was looking like the favorite was Notre Dame GP, and they drop a big loss, 56-14 to to Southern Columbia. And mainly it's just because they didn't wrestle any of their guys. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's funny because I was like five minutes too late um, and reading the the article that Tom Hausnick wrote um, about this, and, and this was a predetermined thing. And and when Eric and I did the uh, the Power Hour, um, you know, we had talked about this match being such a good one, number one versus number three in the state. And um, and then Tom Hausnick, I, I read the article that he wrote, and, and in there it's it's saying how Coach Matt Veers uh, of Notre Dame Green Pond is. Uh, they're not sending their starters, right? And um, you can read the article, you can read about it. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but you know, a lot of it was a, a personal decision for for the the coaching staff and for the wrestlers themselves because you know the the backups per se they they weren't able to wrestle at all this year because of the way the school was with being virtual ver- versus non virtual and um, you know they had some challenges, some serious challenges in the you know with the COVID nineteen. Um, you know, trying to figure out how they were going to get guys in the practice room. And, um, 
he wanted to give him a shot and give him a chance. Um, you know, there's there's a still a thread on Twitter that it's going on about was it the right move? Was it not? You know, Notre Dame just won the the individual team title for the second year in a row. I think, you know, they, they probably would have, even with all their starters, they would have been a, a pretty darn good match. Um, and it turned out to not because, you know, Southern Club just came in and, and kind of, you know, did what they had to do and, and took care of business against a team that, you know, really didn't have a whole lot of, uh, you know, guys there that were, were used to wrestling. Um, so take it for whatever it is. You know, some people are, you know, saying that it was the wrong move. Some people are saying it's an admirable move because you're getting those – those, you know, non-starters, a chance to wrestle in big matches. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I don't have a real opinion on it. Um, I know Notre Dame was ranked number one in the state by us. So, you know, it kind of, you know, made, made me look a little silly. But, um, you know, I, all those teams are so close. Reynolds, Notre Dame, and Southern Columbia, you know, all, all three of them are, are very tight, um, you know, neck and neck with each other. So, so, you know, Southern Columbia is going in feeling pretty fresh I think I, I think they're feeling pretty good um you know obviously it wasn't the match that they expected but I think they beat Bowling Springs and I think they're in the finals against Reynolds I think and and Reynolds and Southern Columbia have wrestled three of the last four times in the state finals so why not make it four straight uh Reynolds Southern Columbia yeah I, here's the way I mean I, I guess I mean I don't have too much of an opinion on it but I mean you have to wonder if there's some other story behind it because I, I was was there weight issues with some other, you know, studs that like, just like with Waynesburg and with her, some other guys, you know, who have, you know, like Jackson Arrington being up what four weight classes or, you know, other guy Panera Johnson being up two weight classes, you know, where there were some weight things that happened with Notre Dame GP that were cause them to make that decision because I don't know if that one is the right time, but you're throwing them into the wolves. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're not throwing them up against a, a JV team to give them some action and give them a close match. I mean, you're, you're facing Southern Columbia, like you said, one of the best teams in the state. So it's great that they get mat time, but that mat time isn't very much time because they got, they got beat pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. I, I, and, and just to, to kind of follow up on that. And I agree with you. I know what you're saying. Like, is it, is it really benefiting those guys? And, and I think it was, I don't know. I don't, again, I'm not going to speculate. You, you can go read the article and what um, coach Matt Veer said about the, the situation. And um, you know, I think it has valid points. And, and, and again, it's, I don't know. It, it's my philosophy that, Hey, it's your team. It's your, you know, as long as your guys all, it's kind of like when I talked to Matt Levy at Franklin regional, you know, when they opted quote out of the, you know, the state or not the state, the, the regional team tournament, you know, it was a team decision. It's their prerogative. I mean, if that's what, if that's what their choice is, so be it, you know, like um, that's on them, you know, as long as your parents aren't unhappy, your boosters aren't unhappy and, and, you know, the wrestlers and the coaching staff and they're like, Hey, this is what we agreed to. Hey, by all means, man, do what you do what you want. Um, you know, but I, I know what you're saying is it's not like they got valuable quote mat time uh, against Southern Columbia when they just, you know, kind of got wiped, you know, wiped around a little bit. Um, but, Hey, Southern Columbia is the type of team that they're going to wrestle whoever's in front of them. They don't care. Yeah. Um, they're going to, they're going to wrestle the best regardless. And, uh, you know, they're, they're looking for a fourth straight time against Reynolds and they know that this time it could be very different. You know, last year, Southern Columbia was, was, I wouldn't say the favorite, but they were definitely nipping at their heels for sure. And, um, they didn't get it done this year. I think they, they smell blood in the water. I, I think they're, they're ready to go. And, uh, that's why I love Reynolds and, and Southern Columbia. Uh, you know, between you have Chestnut Ridge and Burrow, and then you have Reynolds and Southern Columbia. Those four schools can just I, I'd let them wrestle just every year, regardless of who they have. Let them wrestle every year because they're always bringing fans. They're bringing you know always noise. It, it's great atmosphere. Um, they travel well and they wrestle hard. So um, I'm excited for for Saturday. And at the time frames for Saturday for those semifinals and finals matchups. So for double A wrestling action starts at 11 a.m. for the semifinals. One o'clock are the finals. Again, all at Cumberland Valley, the finals and the third place match as well. Also at one o'clock. That's for double uh, A. Triple A semifinals start at four o'clock. And then the first and third place matches take place at six o'clock. So again, everything happening at Cumberland Valley High School, and we'll have uh, we'll be tracking all of it for you if you're looking for uh, you know results and 
want to know what's happening throughout the entire day on Saturday, we'll have it for you. Uh, one thing I want to mention before we head off, I want to thank uh, Nick Fuller of Tactical Mind. You see it on Jeff's uh, corner of his shoulder there. Make sure you do check out Tactical Mind. And uh, let's uh, throw it to, to um, real quick, Jeff, and uh, see what Nick's up to. This is the Tactical Mind, and I work with athletes in the field of sports psychology as a cognitive performance coach. Within five minutes of talking to a parent, they make the connection right away that this would be great for my kid to have when they're in college, when they're just going through the ups and downs of high school. Who wouldn't benefit from having more self-awareness? Who wouldn't benefit from having the ability to self-regulate our emotions and our counterproductive thoughts? Who wouldn't benefit from having more optimism, not just on the field, but in life? Get the checkout. Use promo code POWER to receive 50% off your initial consultation. Again, promo code POWER, P-O-W-E-R, to receive 50% off your initial consultation. Jeff, I think this might be the shortest show we've ever had. 40, 44 minutes. Well, after we did the two-hour two show last time with all the champions, I mean, we could have brought on all the NCAA uh, all Americans from the Whippeal, right? We could have, oh, we could have done that. We could, we could have tried to bring Spencer on to talk about, you know, wrestling without ACLs. We could have brought Chem Dog on to talk about losing the car to Rocky. That probably wouldn't, that probably wouldn't go well. Um, <laughs> you know, we we could have, we could have had some fun there. Um, well, how about, how about the South Park boys? You know, how about um, Jake Wenzel? You know, and and Nina Bonacorsi from from Bethel Park. They wrestled. You know, they both fell in the finals, but man, they they had. A uh, heck of a tournament, man, and uh, they're both they're they're both coming back. Greg Harvey's coming back. He's a Boardtown guy, but you know he he's coming back for Pitt. So um, it was and nice to the, see. Even the semifinals, you had all WPIL, Nina Bonacorsi, Jake Woodley, Woodley from yeah, North Allegheny. Yeah, yeah, Jake Woodley. My gosh, he wrestled great, and uh, you know his seed was not indicative of where he was and and who he was, right? And and, and it just so happened. That you know he he got hot at the right time. He didn't have a great Big Twelve, but he came in, man, like a like a man on fire, man. He just came out and just took people out. And and uh, I thought he he was close with Jacob Warner um, from Iowa. Uh, you know I thought he was he was gonna get a win over there. He had beat him in freestyle. Um, but yeah, how about Nino and and Jake Woodley r right there wrestling? And that was really cool to see. Um, so much Whippeal power there, right? There was so much Whippeal power that you see throughout the NCA, not only in Pennsylvania, but just the overall nation, right? So that's that's really cool to see, you know, two teammates with Spencer Lee and Michael Kemmer, both Franklin Regional graduates that are in the, the NCA finals, right? Which is which is really nice. And of course, two pit guys from the Whippeal, Jake Wenzel and Nina Bonacorsi, Bethel Park, South Park, you know, basically neighbors um, being in the NCA finals. That's pretty cool, right? When you have... I think it was like 20% of the NCAA finals all from the Whippeal. That's pretty neat, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. And it helps. Uh, you get a big commit from the WPL, Jared Kessler of Connellsville, now headed to Pitt. Uh, don't know that, the, the you know, I, I think Kessler had Pitt on his mind for quite some time, but, you know, I'm sure that really helps seeing Nino and Jake uh, in the finals. Yeah, I, I wasn't surprised at all to see Jared choose pit in fact you know when we were doing interviews for true power he was i think he had a pit shirt on or he had something and i was like hey when's when's his decision coming when are you gonna let us know you're gonna pit and he's like ah oh, you know i'm kind of looking around at other schools and you know you knew pit was always on the mind right on, on the brain and um you know but like you said it probably really helped propel him to make that decision watching the ncas you know i i certainly would if i'm if i'm on the fence about pit and i see that i'm thinking yep i'm, I'm where do i need to sign because i'd like to be on that do you think it's going to be tough for a lot of these seniors that are finishing up wrestling this season to uh, go on to a team where basically most college wrestlers are probably going to come back? I mean, there's going to be a few that take the graduation and move on. But from what I'm seeing, a lot of guys are planning to come back to, to take advantage of that extra year of eligibility they're receiving. Do you think it's going to be tough for a lot of these a lot of these freshmen to be able to make or a lot of these seniors make an impact in the freshman season? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you're going to see a, a trickle down effect and, and kind of a domino effect of the, the, you know, almost seventh year for some people, um, you, you know, scholarships aside, you're going to have, you're going to have crowded lineups. You're going to have, you're going to have people that are, are there biding their time longer and longer and longer. You're going to have, you know, have guys that just don't pan out. Right. And, and they were there for two years and they thought the third year is my year, but now the starter's coming back. So, um, why I'm only here for another year. Why am I even staying around? So you're going to see teams, you know, I think you're going to have, it's going to be a weird dynamic where you're going to have like your, your senior level guys and your, or, you know, your higher 
uh, guys that have been there a couple years, like four or five years, and then you're going to have the guys that have been there for like a year or two years. In that middle are those guys that kind of get crammed out, if you will. Um, you know, so it, it's weird, and it's we haven't quite seen the unintended consequences of allowing that extra year yet, but I think we're going to start to um, see that now. And we're also seeing it with a lot of seniors this year um, just because of lack of recruiting and lack of taking college visits, you're seeing a lot of seniors. You know, I'm thinking of like Sammy Starr from Kiski, a state medalist who who's not signed yet. You know, that's kind of – it's rare to have a, a state medalist. You'll have a few, right? But it's rare to see as many state medalists as we have not signed yet. Um, and I think that just – that's a combination of, one, COVID, and two, you know, trying to figure out who's coming back and who's not. Um, and – you know, it's and a the challenge scholarships for, then, right? And, the well, scholarship scholarships, probably yeah. tough. Yeah. So it's it, there's a whole it's like a three headed monster. So it's it's tough to figure out. Um, but the, you know they're gonna they're gonna figure it out one way or another, man. <laughs> no doubt about it. Well, we still got uh, what a couple more shows to go, Jeff. Uh, you know, we got the we're gonna recap for you the uh, team states next week once uh, everything is completed on Saturday, and we'll also be previewing the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic that's coming up yep. just a, a week away. Uh, so we got a lot of uh, exciting breakdown for that, and then we'll have a recap of that and uh, kind of looking ahead to what's gonna be coming in the uh, off season. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. You know, I don't I don't want this thing to end. So let's just keep it rolling. And there's plenty of wrestling to talk about, right? We're gonna have there's there's a lot of wrestling going on in the Whippeal. You know, there's cards going on. There's you know there's there's a lot of of you know action going on even outside the season. So you know we're gonna we're gonna break it all down for you. Want to uh, thank everybody for listening in today, and also thanks to Nick Fuller of Tactical Mind for uh, being a sponsor to us here on PA Power. For Jeff Upson, I'm Greg Warnock. Thanks for listening in to War Up on the WPIL.